This week, got out the book of Revelation. I translated it a few years ago, and it's now out. The, the, uh, the, the translation's been out for a long time, but I read it, audiobook, YouTube, it's there. I, I don't know if I'm going to uh, try to do the uh, audible thing or try to put it in audible or read for audible. I don't want to get into reading people's books on audible, but it's out there. And this week, when I released it this week, I hit for the first time a hundred subscribers on YouTube. whoop de doo Um, I... You know, folks, I don't know how seriously YouTube really wants to have more YouTube channels. With this recent, you have to be super, super big in order to run advertisements. Um, I don't know. That's a lot of YouTube channels that can't run advertisements. I, I, you know, you've got to have like a thousand subscribers and you've got to get like this ridiculous number of views every week. Otherwise, you're not allowed to help YouTube make money. I, I don't, I, I don't know how serious YouTube is about its own future. Now, the, the typical pop culture, uh, <clears throat> lame brain response is they don't care about the little guy. They don't care about people that are just starting. Well, you know, the thing is, it's, it's like, I have talked about this before. There's this corporate takeover. There's this corporate attack on smallness. Like big companies attack things that are small. And, and you know, the, the only, and what they do is they, 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 they call it high standards. We and it, it surmounts to in, in the business sense. It it depends on people not knowing this about business. And I don't frankly, I don't think this ignorance is as widespread as Google, which owns YouTube if if you live under a rock, or if you're in Reed Rapids and needed me to you wanted to hear me talk to the people who live under a rock. I, I don't know if Google really understands how much people actually don't not understand this. There's this war against smallness. And if we took what companies like Google and what governments, too many governments do in the name of high standards, do in the business world, we applied it to humans growing up, it'd be like this. We want adults. So we're going to make it illegal for anyone to be under the age of 18. If you're under 18, you get a fine, you go to prison, and your, your, your wrong, illegitimate life gets taken away from you because we need people that are 18. Th- that's how much sense this makes for YouTube to say, listen, there's so many channels out there that, that, that could run advertisements on their videos and make money from their videos, but... We're not going to let them do that until they are, uh, have, have a thousand subscribers. We're not going to let them make a little bit of money so they can buy better equipment, make better videos, put more time into it, make it worth their time so that they can get more people to want to watch their videos. You're required to have garbage quality. You're going to have to take all kinds of unreimbursed time. You're not allowed to help other people sell stuff until you suddenly jump to a thousand and then you can be our rich friends in our, in our, uh, circle group. Th- th- that's in usual in it. See, it, it's like, no, Jesse, they want to make sure you're serious. That's, that's, that's having typical standards. That's how everybody is. And which is the typical response of the people who believe that, that Rome wouldn't fall and that, that, that whatever is big is going to be there eternally. Greece didn't fall. Persia didn't fall. Babylon didn't fall. And America is never going to fall. It's always going to be the biggest and the greatest. And it's always going to be there. Come on, Jesse, which is also appeal to the stone, you know, appeal to the stone when someone's talking to you and they say, oh, that's ridiculous, but they don't provide a reason. You can call them out and say, excuse me, that's appeal to the stone. This is this is the type of response that this stuff gets. No, 
What what's I mean, why make it illegal or against your policy for small people to be able to do business? Why 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 say the little guy he he can't get advertising money, so we're not going to make him want to do ads. Why they change that policy a few months ago? Why why do that? I I know Google's lame excuse is that uh, they don't want uh, abuse. They don't want spam accounts. Well, there's other ways of getting spam accounts than uh, you know. Uh, mon- you know, m- helping people sell stuff. There, there's other things. I mean, Google's all about this AI thing. Google wants to create this AI and your life can choose a direction uh, such as making the earth a cleaner, better place. No, it's not cleaner. It's not cleaner. Making the earth a self-sustaining green planet. It's not about cleanness is the real environmental problem. That everything's dirty. But, but the environmentalist eco-weenies, they want it to be about loving the earth and making everything green and being quote-unquote sustainable, which sustainable technology is already there. It's just the people who own the patents won't let anybody use it. So when someone does make a patent, some big company buys it and then shelves it and then keeps selling whatever fuel source they have that they make money on. So we've got this, this Google thing that's going to tell you that being part of the green fake sustainability cult is one of your possible life missions. And then it's going to suggest your products for you. Search on Google. Oh, you don't want that. You really want this one. And the AI is going to be managing this and telling you how to live your life. And that that's going to make your life better. Because Google's AI understands you better than you do. Google's AI has more potential than you do. Google's AI is more talented, skilled, valuable to God, valuable as a person than you are. And yet, Google's AI is not capable of finding out which YouTube accounts are uh, just trying to spam everybody. So they're just going to make all small accounts unable to sell advertisements. That's right. You're a big company. All those little tiny YouTubers, (laughs) they're not selling your ads anymore. That's the result of it. Twisted, twisted, twisted thinking. And this type of mismanagement, it's mismanagement. It's mismanagement. Sell stock in Google. This is, it's it's a self-destructing thing. This is not going to go anywhere. The presumption that people are not as talented as an AI could be, you know, that's not a company that's going to be lasting, folks. That's not a company that's going to be lasting. You don't want to buy stock in Skynet because then you're fighting against the company that you invested in. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. And this type of This type of bad management is what the Star Wars controversy is about. People don't like how Star Wars went down. You know, they're they're bad management and frustrating people. I mean, the the stress from Star Wars is probably what killed Carrie Fisher. The other two, they killed on the set. Bad management is a theme all over the place. It's just a theme. How in the world? Uh, Slightly off topic, but I should probably get to the point. Don't count on anything. The moment you craft for yourself any reliance on what the future might bring, you're locked into the unknown and render yourself a leaf in the breeze. Abandon old structures. Drop shame. Withdraw perfectionism. Be your best. Be yourself. And march onward. We can't know what the future might bring. Making one's self dependent on any outcome, when such dependence is anything but necessary is lifestyle Russian roulette. The way through the future is agile strength and adaptive readiness, not stock planning nor course plotting. Usually, dependence on the future stems from immaturely prioritizing wants above needs. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.